Welcome to the City Life Family Podcast, a podcast for ministry leaders, young and old. Our aim is to equip you for the work of ministry and encourage you along the way. My name is Chris. I'm with my friend Jared again, and today we're talking about rest. There's all kinds of tensions. Jared, is is rest just vacation, chilling, and scrolling on your phone, or is there something greater than that? I mean, I like vacation. (laughs) I sometimes like scrolling on my phone. I don't know if that answers your question, but... uh, Well, I think what we're talking about today is something a little bit different than that. We're going to try to get our minds around rest, but also qualify it, given the fact that we both have four kids. Oh, yeah. They demand a lot. They demand a lot. Yep. Uh, we have the church thing going on. Yep. And so, yep. you know, we might even come in here a little tired this morning, but right. um, but there is an idea of rest that we want to get at because I think it's helpful. Mm-hmm. I think it's healthy. It's more than just a vacation day. Yeah. It's more than just you know, stopping doing what you're doing and binge watching Netflix. There's something unique about intentional rest. There's something unique yeah. about being able to rest as Christians in the fact that we can delight in God. We can get yeah. energy. We can get life from God yeah. uh, if we do that. And so we want to talk a little bit about that today yep. and just say, and just call out the fact that probably in the City Light family, especially since we're a little bit faster pace, right? Yeah. That there's, there's probably some of us that struggle with like laziness and apathy in ministry, yeah. but I think the vast majority of us struggle with going fast, doing a lot, putting in a ton of hours. We probably lean more that way. And I think some of us yeah. probably do that um, or struggle with that. It's just like a workaholism thing. Yeah. There's a, a sense in which we feel good about ourselves when we accomplish a lot of things. And yeah. so it's kind of this internal drive toward workaholism. Yeah. And I think there's another thing that keeps us fast paced that uh, this is more my vein is that we want to be seen by other people, yeah. you know, that kind of that people pleasing aspect yes. of working a lot of hours. Hey, I feel validated when other people yes. see me doing all these oh, things. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm, I'm worth something now. Like I'm great. And so we just run at crazy paces. And so, and we, you know, are trying to keep up with the people next to us. And I just think, um, if you haven't thought about this, we, we just want to get people's minds like in this space where they're thinking, Oh, maybe I, maybe I do need a little Mm. rest. Like maybe I am running crazy fast. And I think, I mean, there's just some clear proof out there. Like I want to convince, you know, convince people that are listening you may have, like, how many of us, like, here's just an example. How many of us, if we worked a work week that was like 48 hours or 40 hours or 38 hours, would go around bragging about the fact that we did that? Like, no, we love putting in those, well, we might not love putting in those 75 hour weeks, but we put in those 75 hour weeks and we love to like brag about that. Like, we're saying, right. dude, I put in 80 hours last week and we kind of feel this self righteousness about yes. that. Like, you know, I'm, um, I'm like, I'm not, busy for the Lord. Oh, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm doing so much for Jesus. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. Or if we do have a day, like a Saturday or a Sabbath day that we're supposed to rest, <laughs> how many of us can actually just sit there and like turn off our minds? I don't know. When you like oh. sit there, temptations maybe to return yeah. emails, oh, yeah. texts. Yeah. No, sitting is really hard. Oh, yeah. Disciplining your mind not to just jump into, okay, what is next week and how do I mentally prepare for it? But to be like, no, this is not that day. That's not this moment. So yeah, yeah, we're just so I think we run at an incredibly fast pace. It you know, hard work. Hard work is a good thing. Yep. But because of the culture, because of a lot of other a lot of factors. Yes. We're just running really hard, and I think we need rest. Yep. And I think rest is a biblical thing. I think yep. God designed us for rest. Yes. We always love to root these conversations in the scripture. So Chris, yes. as we think about the idea of rest. As you look at the Bible, where like where do you get some of this stuff? Or is this yes. is it even in there? No, I love that. Well, thank you, Jared. Yeah, as we jump in, just we always want to go to God, right? So yeah. at the very beginning, work and rest are not in conflict, hmm. right? So God is a God who worked, uh, He labored, He created, and He rested on the seven days. So in the very fabric of humanity and creation, God wove in rest, right? There should be this rhythm, night and day, work and rest. And so this is something that God has modeled. Now he didn't rest on the seventh day in creation in Genesis because he was exhausted. Yeah, Jeez, yeah. God wasn't worn out. He didn't need a breather and a Kit Kat bar, take a little break, you know, like he- Not that we know yeah, of. No, 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 I don't think so. And so that wasn't the case he was making. I think he was trying to model something in that, and then, and then you look at Exodus chapter twenty, where God has then um, he, he's 
created a nation that would be set apart for himself, that would reflect his kingdom and his ways. And how does he how does he instruct people in human flourishing? And the Ten Commandments, he said, hey, take a day of Sabbath rest, where mm. this isn't just about going to the temple and hearing scripture or, or pr- praying. This was a time for you just to literally not work, enjoy God, um, take a day to enjoy his gifts, his grace, his, your family, community, good meals. It's a day where he's just blessing you to be able to be and not do. And so uh, that's how he modeled that in his uh, the chosen people, Exodus chapter 20. And then you think about Jesus comes on the scene and how did he model rest, right? Like he could have just started his ministry, gone bigger, faster, more, But throughout Jesus's ministry, there's this big crowd. He preaches, there's miracles, people show up, there's conflict, disciples have want follow-up conversations, and Jesus regularly pulls away to pray. It Mm -hmm. says, you know, he goes up the mountain, he walks away from the crowd, he withdraws for a time. And it's interesting, the disciples see the pattern of Jesus in his life that he ministers, he pours out, and then he pulls away to be with the Father. And they ask Jesus not how to preach, they don't even ask Jesus how to perform miracles. Mm. They do ask Jesus how to pray. Mm. Jesus, how to pray. There's power in your prayer life. We don't talk to God like you do. Would you give us this? And then and then finally, obviously, Jesus comes in Matthew chapter 11. He says, and, um, you know, come to me, all you are weary, heaven laden, and I will give you rest, for I am gentle and lowly. And so this is... This is who Jesus is. He is inviting us to experiencing him. And then, you know, Hebrews, it's not even, but Hebrews, there's this greater rest that Jesus is trying to give us, this future Sabbath rest that's now is ours. So, you know, what was amazing about Jesus is it wasn't just that he stopped doing ministry on the Sabbath. He he actually did that, and he did that to frustrate the ministry leaders. Hmm. But in Hebrews, he, he talks about this greater rest that's coming. And so we get these little foretastes of a soulful rest right now in Jesus, Um, but man, we're going to get to experience even more of that in glory. And I just want to say, Jared, this is personal to me because I want to experience, I want to confess two wearinesses. First is a non-Christian. When I confess, when I sinned against the Lord, okay, um, there was a sense, even though I denied wanting to follow Jesus for a season of my life, there was a weariness that I was, I was looking for something to fill the God size Mm. hole in my heart and I couldn't find it. And there was a there was a guilt and a shame I was carrying around. Mm. And when I met Jesus, there's a great soulful rest knowing that all of my sins, past, present, and future have been forgiven. Mm. Knowing that what was dark has been blotted out and made white as snow, and I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. There's a restfulness in knowing that Jesus said, it is finished. It's finished, okay? And so, one, for the Christian, we live underneath that banner, okay? Mm. We don't have anything more to add. There's no righteousness we can make a deposit into our account all of our sins are forgiven. All of the righteousness and the good works of Christ have been imputed and given to us. And so we're not working and earning and striving and performing for a, a dictator. The gospel's on us, right, Jared? Second, there's there's a weariness that happens in my soul as a Christian when I try to keep up with everybody else. And I think you named it. But man, I just want to confess to you pride. Like when I look at other pastors on our staff and they're going to be at prayer night or they're going to be at the city group training, and they're going to be at the missions banquet, and they're going to be at the the fundraiser in the city. And I think to myself, I've got to keep up. Mm-hmm. And that becomes a functional slavery. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say that's pride. And and I, I've wrestled with it, and I've tried to both perform and do and be, and then just not acknowledge that like, no, like I don't have to be at everything. Does it make sense? I don't have to be in every room. Um, I can rest and be with the Lord. I can stay at home tonight. I can invest in my kids. I don't have to rush into the office. Mm. I can take the morning to spend time with Jesus. I just want to confess to you, yeah. like that that's a fight that I wrestle with and it, it really steals me a ton. So th- that's what scripture has to say and a couple of the challenges I'm, I'm wrestling no. with. What about you, Jared? Where do you, where do you see some of this yeah, in your I, life and in the scriptures? Yeah, I love the, <clears throat> well, I appreciate the confession and it just reminds like reminds me to go back to that Matthew 11 passage because it talks in the you know next line, it talks about, um, the yoke, like yeah. the yoke is easy and the burden is light. And the Pharisees in the day, they said the, the Pharisees had a, a yoke, but it was like, you know, it's kind of a, a working tool or whatever yeah. that rests on shoulders of animals as they're pulling things. And that's like a heavy burdensome thing. And it like, it hurts. It's hard yes. to carry that. And Jesus actually invites it. You know, yep. you're saying we feel the pressure to like live up to whatever, or to like compete with other people. And Jesus says, man, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He doesn't say, 
you know, sit on the sidelines and don't do anything and just right. be lazy. You are doing something, but his yoke is like his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so there's something powerful to like our like we need rest. We yes. need and, and one of the gospel promises, yes. one of the eternal gospel promises is rest. And that just resonates with me when I hear like eternal rest. I'm like, yeah. yes, where yes. is it right now? Please yes. like bring it, Jesus. And yes. so anyway, I think that's good. I think one of the other things that I, when a pastor once pointed out to me, um, the command to Sabbath. So there's two places in the Old Testament where the Ten Commandments are listed, once in Exodus and once in Deuteronomy. Yep. In De- Deuteronomy chapter 5, it it describes the Sabbath that he gave yeah. God's people, but he gives a different reason for the Sabbath. And he says in Deuteronomy 5.15, he says, you shall remember that you were a slave. Remember, they had just come out of the, the Exodus, Egypt story. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. And what he was saying is, hey, there used to be this powerful cultural force that mm. enslaved you. You literally had slave masters and they made you do, 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 do yes, all of the yes, time. Yes. And there was no way of escaping it. You mm. had to do it. But now I've rescued you. And now you used to do that. But let me remind you, you used to do that, but you don't have to do that anymore. And so I'm giving you the opportunity yeah. and the freedom to rest because I have saved you. And I think that in our culture, as we see that specific command, like you used to be enslaved to that. I think obviously we don't have taskmasters who are like controlling us saying, hey, seven days a week, you have to do this. But we do have a powerful cultural force called, you know, American culture (laughs) that is like pushing us to say, never stop, go seven days a week. You have to do this. You have to keep up. You should like, you need to be impressive. You need to work 70, 80, whatever hours a week. You need to do this. And I think Jesus is saying to us, hey, you don't actually have to do this. Like I'm giving you permission to rest. As a matter of fact, your soul needs rest. You are not a a performance machine. You are actually created to like live and delight in the work that I've given you, but also the rest that I've given you. And so I think there's a sense in which it's almost like we're standing in like a river in like of culture telling us to go, go, go. And it's like pushing us downstream. And there's in the, in the Sabbath command, it's like one day a week, we need to like step out of the street, yes. like step out of the Russian Good. river and like actually not kill ourselves in that. Yeah. And so, man, I, so we've kind of named the problem. Yes. We've talked about some of the, you know, some of these biblical um, ideas of rest, but we interact, you especially interact with a ton of ministry leaders, a ton of pastors. <sighs> what do you think is at stake if we don't get this thing of rest right? Cause we, I mean, I've struggled. You've struggled. Oh, yeah. So speaking either from personal experience or even pastors that you've yeah. observed, watched, talked to, what do you think is at stake if we don't get this right? Well, first of all, yeah, there's a, I think staying in the scriptures, even as you were talking, I was just thinking about how gracious God is with his people, mm. you know, um, you know, I think about Jonah, he goes to Nineveh and he's, he's preaching this message. It's like the shortest, worst message he's ever preached. And like, the whole city repents and he crawls up on a hill and he's pouting. And I love that God's like, Hey, go sit underneath this plant and take a nap. Like his whole <laughs> yeah, yeah. solution to a pouty missionary is just like, go take a nap, bro. And I just, sometimes I feel like that. Yeah. Does it make any sense? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's a grace that God's like, dude, just take a re- rest, just rest, yeah. just nap, just yeah. be okay. Um, Anyway, some of y'all pastors just need to take a nap. Some of you ministry leaders, just take a nap. Go to bed. It's going to be okay. I'm taking that as a word I, come from on, the Lord. Come on. Yeah, this <laughs> afternoon, I got hour. something scheduled. So um, anyways, uh, all that to say, the, the oper- what, what this costs you is, I, you said it very nicely. I'm going to say it strongly. I think a refusal to rest is the idolatry of self. It's self-sufficiency. It's, um, you know, I can just push through, I can do, and I can perform. And, um, and so the, the consequences are massive. Like at some point you just don't have sustainable affection for God. At some point you start to operate with God and relate to him as a taskmaster, not a loving father that you enjoy, but somebody you have to serve. He's a King. He's distant. Um, he's asking you to run harder and do more. And I, at some point I get worried about like ministry leaders who just, ministry becomes their identity. It becomes, they, they started out doing this because they wanted to love Jesus and, and make him known. 
But ministry is so intoxicating Mm. that before you know it, you don't actually get your approval from the Father anymore. That's not where you're trying to rush to sneak away and get more of. You get your identity and your approval and the strokes to your ego from performing on stage Mm. or doing something or getting that well done from an elder or that encouraging email. And that becomes the fuel. And now you've traded proximity and presence with God for just the approval of the people around you. And it is intoxicating. It is addicting, but it will absolutely destroy you Mm. because when you don't have it, you don't, you have to keep doing more to get more of it. And, um, it, it, I, I would just say it will wear out your family. It will leave your soul empty. Um, it, it will erode your relationships. You won't have time for them. And eventually your health, your soul is just not healthy and you're just, you're falling. I, I always look at it like, you know, it's cold right now in Nebraska. Eventually, if you were to take a walk every day out on that ice, you'd be fine for about a few more months. But at some point, you didn't know, but underneath that water, that ice is getting thinner, not thicker. And you're going to take a step out and you're going to fall right through. Mm. And that's the the place we're setting ourselves up up as ministry leaders. We've Mm. refused to rest. We grow weary. We grow tired. We grow grumbling towards the Lord. And more ministry success is just never enough to satisfy our weary souls. And and so we look for something, addictions, escapes, medications, and... uh, it's really tragic. Unfortunately, we've we've all seen mystery leaders, and I'm getting to the point now, Jared. We're you know we're we're coming up on forty. I'm coming up on forty this summer, and you're starting to see men and ministry leaders either lose their marriage or lose their ministry uh, because for a while now they've been doing ministry but not being with Jesus, mm. and eventually those habits run you down. And you see that in Scripture. You think about Saul um, started off well, finished really poorly, mm-hmm. and and you're like, man, that's a real, that's a real thing. So yeah, yeah. let's not do that. You know, I know it, it is a sobering thing to think about. So, so there's there's a lot at stake if yeah, we don't get this right. A lot at stake. We've kind of talked about the the you know the ethereal, like these are the ideas or the invitations of Jesus to rest. Yeah. Um, I think it might be helpful to just talk about even personally yeah. how have we tried to rest. We actually have both in the last few years had the blessing of getting sabbaticals as pastors. I know that everyone who's listening doesn't necessarily um, have that opportunity, but some people do. Amazing gift. There's also, as we talked about in Exodus and Deuteronomy, this invitation for this kind of weekly sabbatical thing that's called the Sabbath. It's called the Sabbath, you know, the same root word, Sabbath, sabbatical. Um, And so I'm curious... For you, uh, as it comes around, I know you got a lot of stuff going oh, yeah. on, but are there any norms that have been particularly life giving to you as you think about, you know, not just taking a day off and maybe yeah. sleeping in extra late and drinking an extra coffee and, right. you know, taking three naps in the afternoon yeah. and watching Netflix? Is there anything that's been particularly life giving to you with Sabbath? Yeah. Thank you for And I, I, this has actually been one of the things that's kept me in ministry. Hmm. So we started uh, Friday is my Sabbath and on, on my Sabbath, I'm trying to do three things, okay? I'm trying to connect with Jesus. So I wake up, read the Bible, sit, journal, enjoy Jesus, um, try to get up before the kids. And, uh, and we homeschool, so Fridays is a, is a day where we, get, we, don't have a, we don't have to rush off to class. Does it make sense? Uh, second thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move my body at some point in the day. Mm. So resting doesn't just mean sitting. For me, it means exercising. Um, it, it's a gift to have a body you're trying to steward and enjoy. And for me, the the endorphins that I can enjoy just by moving my body is worship. I, I try to exercise, whether that's playing basketball or running or something, just uh, that that's something I do. And when it's nice out, I always try to get around creation. Mm. Creation points me to my creator. Enjoying his beauty reminds me of all of the, his... Di- his design and uh, makes me want to worship him and enjoy him. So I'm just trying to think of creative ways. And the final one I'm trying to do on my sabbaticals, I'm trying to stay off my phone. I'm trying to stay off email. I'm trying to stay away from sermon prep in my head. Uh, and I'm trying to make an investment uh, in my family. So Friday, I try to kind of call Fun Dad Friday, um, try to make s- space to really Sabbath with my kids, not from my kids. Mm. So uh, we're going to enjoy God together and I'm going to enjoy the grace of my kids on that day. So um, those are some things that I really try to do. I try to spend that whole day. I'm not a ministry worker. I'm not a slave. I'm not a performer. I'm not trying to accomplish much. We're going to eat donuts, drink coffee. We're going to read our Bibles. We're going to pray. I'm going to play and uh, exercise. So those are some rhythms. And yeah. uh, um, and then by Saturday evening, I have, I have to be honest, by Saturday evening, I'm already thinking about Sunday. 
and it just is what it is. And so um, that's kind of how I, I structure my week. Yeah, I think that's good. And to call out a little greatness, we have people in our church who have talked about, because your Fun Dad Friday things oh, yeah. make your Instagram story. Oh, yeah. And so I've heard some of my friends from our church talk about like seeing what you do. And they're like, yes. man, I love how Chris interacts with his kids and what he does yes. and how he takes his time to not, like you said, not break from your kids, but actually engage rest and with rest them. with yeah. them. Yeah. I love that. And so, yeah, for our, uh, for our family, our Sabbath is like a Friday evening yeah. uh, or Friday, like late afternoon into Saturday late afternoon. And it's a lot of the same things. Um, we try to get specific, like, try to plan specific fun like outings with the kids to do to just you know whether that's going to the zoo or going to a state park when it's not freezing cold outside to like go do a hike together get to a park get outside we um i think jesus is okay with this but we give our kids a little extra time while like watching a show on screens on on saturday morning so my wife and i can sit next to each other with bibles and journals and i'm like I think Jesus is okay with the extra free screen time <laughs> because we're getting great time connecting with him. But I think there's something powerful about us connecting with him yes. and connecting with each other while we're doing that Come and on. talking about it, journaling about it so we can, you know, get life. I think the other thing um, that is helpful, that is not necessarily a thing that we go for during our Sabbath, but it's, it's helpful to have an idea. If you don't have a plan already, it's helpful yes. to like, plan a little bit yes. and know what you're trying to do. Cause if you try to do it in the moment, it can oh, be kind of crazy. And so yeah. we're like, okay, what are we going to do for this Sabbath? What are we going to run at? What are we going to try to knock out? Um, so I think, yeah, those are a few things for us. You, do you have any, I'm just curious, do you have anything from the sabbatical? You, you took a sabbatical yeah. a couple of years ago. Is there anything that was particularly like insightful, life-giving, from your time away, I know that we hung out sometimes. And it yes. seemed like you playing like fourteen cornhole tournaments in the first like two weeks. I'm like, yeah, maybe that's like restful in the Lord. Okay, all right, cornhole. yeah, yeah. I did, I did have a plan. Um, we really structured our my our sabbatical that last summer around a couple things. One was I wanted to figure out when did I have time away from the home where I could have extended blocks, mm-hmm. where I could read, pray, exercise, and journal, and do heart work. Because honestly, my only I had two main goals, work on my heart and serve my family. Yeah. Um, and so read a book um, that really helped facilitate heart work. And, and then we scheduled each day, hey, this is when I'm going to be home. This is when I'm going to be out of the home. Uh, that way my wife and kids knew when did they get dad. And my wife knew when can I pull away yeah. and I could get some time to yeah. just spend time with Jesus. So, so that was it. I had a, a bi- I had a Bible reading plan. I had a couple books I wanted to go yeah. through. I had kind of some times I wanted to exercise and had some ways I wanted to serve my family and lead them on, a, on, on some adventures. And so, so we did all that stuff that, that was really helpful. So if you can do that, if you get that awesome, if you don't, I think what Jared and I are talking about is figure out that 24 hour break where you can have a plan. You know what you're going to read, you know, when you're going to take it, you know, know what you're not going to do, right? How you stay off social media or things that are going to suck your energy. Cause there is a lot of, Jared, I just want to call it a a lot of fake rest. Mm. Watching NFL can be fake rest. Scrolling on your phone is fake rest. You've got to figure out a way to get like soul level connection to Jesus to rest in him because it's not just the absence of work. It's the presence of Jesus that you're after. Mm. And so we're not just trying to chill. Does it make sense? There's a difference between chill and Sabbath rest. And um, what what I think God has for us, the way our souls get replenished, our souls get, our spirit gets uh, energized, our affections get stirred, is some of that intentional resting well mm. with him. So, yeah. yeah. I think that's good for for us. So we got to take a sabbatical this yeah. last summer. And a couple of very, very basic things that came out of that. One is because we, my wife and I got to spend so much time just with Jesus, with our Bibles opened and journals and praying together, all of that. I became more, more convinced than ever that like, Jesus is the actual one we need and he's the one that fuels our ministry. And I'm like, we just need time with Jesus. And I'm like, oh, so Jesus was right about that abiding thing in John 15. (laughs) I know that sounds bad for a pastor to say, but when you get that time, you're like, oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, I I need this. I need this for like to fuel my ministry. So that's one thing. The second thing is, is we got, we actually were in uh, Florida for about half of my, or a little bit more than half of my- Just suffering for the Lord. Yeah, just just suffering under the palm trees, on the beach. (laughs) But there was a unique kind of like healing or even bonding work that he did between us. It's just 
planning a church with a b- bunch of little yeah. kiddos born at the same time, there's some disconnect that happens, yeah. and you realize that there's something powerful about like re- intentional relational time yeah. with the people that matter. Most of you, specifically with you know my wife yeah. and my kids, incredibly life giving and healing for that. And so, um, but like you said. Um, some people get that opportunity to do a sabbatical. Some people, you know, you may not have that in your HR policy or whatever. And so the one thing that we wanted to encourage people with walking away is find a way to get a Sabbath in your week. Uh, take a 24 hour period. Um, don't work. Like don't text that person. Like don't text them back. Don't check your email at all. And as a matter of fact, find, like you said, fight the mental battle to not even like, think about the ministry tasks or the, you know, sermon, like try to like mentally clear that from your brain, which is very difficult. Um, You said this earlier about what you do on your Sabbath, but if you can turn off your phone, come on, if you can turn off, like it's, it's miraculous what happens when you turn off your phone or at least like severely limit the time you have on your phone or don't scroll. So like come up with some sort of boundaries for your phone or any other things that seem to like, you know, just kind of, suck your time. So yeah, yeah, create some boundaries, create some, maybe some rules around that. I think it's okay to create some like boundaries or rules. And then the last thing that we've learned, especially with kids in our house is you're going to try this. And with everything that you start doing, if you've never done it before, you're going to be kind of bad at it sometimes. And so you kind of have to have grace for your failures. Plus I think honestly, when you try to rest, I think it's a spiritual battle. Like I think the enemy is trying to come to, he's trying to discourage you. He's trying to tell you, Hey, you really suck at this. And so you need to like, you should just quit or you should just not do this anymore because it doesn't work or, you know, there's relational conflict that comes up, but you just have to know what you're getting into, have grace for your failures and know that it's a process to learn to get better. And so we'd love to challenge people to do that. Um, Resources. Give me resources, Jared. Give me resources. You got resources uh, that if people are interested, they should try to read and look at. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple books. One, um, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer is great. If you feel like you run at a crazy pace, um, this dude has kind of a... uh, a word for you yes. to help. It's both practical, but also theoretical. Um, that's great. And then um, if you feel like you are maybe running on E or close to running on E and you need uh, you, you need some help, there's a guy named David Murray who wrote this book called Reset. Mm. Um, and it talks about like essentially grace-paced ministry. And wow. it just is a helpful diagnosis in all these different areas of right. life to do a check-in and to be able to like kind of recalibrate uh, to be, yeah, to, to just live at a grace-filled pace. Two words I want to leave people with. One is if you are feeling that, would you be your own advocate and to help people in your city life family, your pastor, elder, leaders, whatever you're working, whoever is your boss, I feel tired. I need to figure out help with resting well. Uh, Let them know if you need a day off, you need vacation, you need uh, whatever that is, make sure you're advocating for that. Number two, if you're a lead pastor, maybe like uh, me and Jared, or you're the elder, make sure you're asking people, are you using your vacation days? Are you resting well? Are you enjoying Jesus? That, that is, does not mean they're not bought into the mission and vision of King Jesus. That We just want people to win the long-term game. Mm, yep. And I think the long-term game is sustainable disciples who are laboring well and enjoying God, not just on E and weary. So mm. I always try to encourage our people, use your vacation yep. times, rest well, yep. advocate for your own self-care. And, uh, and so we want to be people who are blessing that, celebrating that, not toxic cultures that say work hard, do more. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's keep our eyes on that, right? Yep. So Jared, thank you for this time. This was super fun. We can't wait to talk to you guys next month. Appreciate you guys joining us today.